In this example, we're going to look at how we take this humble box here that we've got in the front of our selection here and turn it into one of the sort of shapes that we've got here in the background, one of these four different shapes. This is part of the object oriented ethos, uh, which is sort of 3D Studio Max, and the noun verb way of working. So the noun verb way of working says that we're going to take this box here and we're going to apply something to it. So in this object's case, what I've got is I've got two things. I've got a freeform deformation box and then I've got a turbo smooth. In this object's case, I've got a taper and then a turbo smooth. In this one, we've got another taper, but it's doing something slightly different. And in this example, we've got a taper and a symmetry and a turbo smooth as well. So how do we start from our humble little box here at the bottom and turn him into something that looks like this? Well, first of all, we've got to take him, we've got to create him. So I'll delete that and I'll just say box and I'll left click out and I'll drag out and I'll push up a little way. So that's given me my basic shape, but that might not be the shape that I want. So I'll go to my modify panel and I will just come in there and I'll come in here and I'm going to need some subdivisions so I'll need some in the height so I'll left click and I'll drag up there and I'll need some in the width and the length as well so I'll put maybe um, let's see one in each one of those so that's nice and simple so now I've got my basic box shape, I can start to play around with a few of the modifiers. To do that, we're in our Modify tab. I've got my Modifier list here. If I left click on that, you can see there is a near dizzying array of tools. And in actual fact, there's one or two of them that even go off the bottom of the page here. That's more to do with my screen resolution. You may notice there's a few towards the bottom of yours. We'll talk about those later, don't worry. The first thing, though, that I want to talk about is maybe this one in the middle here which was taper so if I drag down all the way here you can see I've got taper and I'll click on that and you can see now that what we've got is oh I put a poly select on there by mistake now you see I've put that poly that poly select on that was by mistake I want to get rid of it so I will select it in my uh, modifier stack here and I'll just press this remove from modifier stack and there it goes and then I'll go back up my modifier stack to my taper. And you'll notice that there's an orange outline around the box now. That's something called a gizmo. Now this gizmo, I can say, how much do I want to taper? Well, I can either taper out to make it look like a cartoon building. Or I can taper in to make it look more like a pyramid. I've also got the option here to say I want it to curve in or out so we've got something that looks more like the Eiffel Tower again these are all sort of very valid shapes that we could use here and each one of them or any one of them rather could go towards making up a mass of a building or even just a simple skyline in a piece of work that you're doing now I've created that that's nice and simple what happens if I want to put something else on well another shape that we've got is this one here which is quite interesting that's got a freeform deformation on it so what I might do is I might turn off the effect that that box is having and I might put another one on there which is my freeform deformation 3x3 three three. I can have 4x4 four four if I want to, to have more control but I'll go for 3x3 three three so it matches pretty much my box and what this does is, is it gives me a high level control via these control points of how I'm going to move things around so I can do that and look you see I'm moving one point but I'm actually deforming lots of points even though I'm only moving two of these points there so I can come in and I can start to sort of grab quite a few of these and I can just sort of rescale let's see how we're going to do that maybe that come maybe that comes out there we don't know uh, let's come in let's take this one and pull that in even further there we go and I can take out individual points and I can start to move them around and you can see here I'm using my marquee selection to grab sort of three of them at a time and pull them out and create a more convincing shape of base 
at the bottom of our building something that's maybe a little bit more rounded but as it changes in height so it's cross section changes which becomes I think quite an interesting sort of shape that we've got there now I could add my taper onto that but that would start to make it look sort of slightly odd I've kind of got something that looks a little bit more like Isengard there but you know that's quite cool I quite like that could be interesting mix things up a little bit so onto that what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a turbo smooth now we should be able to yep there we go we've just got turbo smooth down at the bottom there and you can see that my turbo smooth if I change the iterations up to two you can see what it does is it smooths off my mesh and it creates sort of four times or in this case sort of um, eight times as many polygons in my model I don't have to view it in this way I could just turn on my ISO line display and you can see we've got a sort of a, a much easier to understand approximation of the building and from this I can come up and down my modifier stack so I can go to my freeform deformation box and let's say for example I want to take one of my control points and I'll move that out there I'll take this and I'll move that out there and you can start to sort of reshape things and you don't have to be at the top of that stack either you see you can just move things around and it's got this sort of clay almost putty type feel to it when you're working like this it's almost quite organic in the way that you do things but as well quite interesting because the shapes that you can make can be very very free form in the way that they flow so we'll come up to the top there and I'll deselect and what I would encourage you to do is to start off yourself with something like a simple box there we go and moving on to your modify tab just try and see what each one of these does there's there's far too many for me to sort of deal with each one individually we will come and use some of them and we will use the more common ones as we go through uh, this sort of training video but really what I want you to do is sort of have a play around with a few of them yourself investigate them the ones that we're going to be using in these training videos are going to be the most commonly used ones so I wouldn't worry about sort of um, having to know each one of them because you, you'll get to know that as we go through the training